today, the barber on the shop who probably has two telephones somewhere to big, expansive hotels. We've just done an installation for a hotel. We've, we've done a combination of everything I've just offered. We've installed voice, we've installed data, we've installed data on the existing data network. We just do VLANs, virtual networks, so that the voice and the data can run together. They have a combination of telephones. They have analog telephones in all the hotel rooms. They have IP phones in the administrative areas. They have digital phones in the areas like the restaurants and everything. So we know this product works and works extremely well. And we'll be pushing this product, and I'm certain that a lot of the business people up there will want to take advantage of this product. We want you to visit our website. There is a special bank account set up at First Caribbean Bank. Um, so we want you to go and donate generously <coughs> to that effort. We also continue to donate heavily to um, the Heart and Stroke Foundation, Lupus Association, the, Vic, the Barbados Vagrants and Homeless Society, Salvation Army, Special Needs, the Autism, Symphonic District Hospital, the Chandler School, we can go on and on. But it's just to, to show our commitment to the community and to help those less fortunate than ourselves. In the area of sports, we are still dominating where we come to things like car racing. We have three major sponsors, um, cars in car, in car racing, that's on Bushy Park, and those are Mark Maloney and the two Mayors brothers, and we also help to give to the assistance of Jeremy Jones, one of our ex-employees. Football also carries the title of Tiddy Cell Barbados Football Premier League, and that starts on the February 24th um, this month. So we hope in that um, there will be renewed effort to get Barbados football back on, on stream. We also support the Barbados Youth Football. And with that, last year we had a Chelsea-sponsored um, DDSL um, football clinic in Barbados, where we, we took the bold step of bringing 31 youngsters from around the Caribbean and had them exposed to some expert training from the Chelsea um, coaches, and that went very well, and we will repeat that this year sometime. In culture, we cannot forget. We are going to still continue to support Popover. It is our national festival, and we will continue to support it. We will continue to support the Gospel Fest, which is coming off in May. We will continue to support the Barbados, sorry, the Tidisal Barbados Reggae Festival, which is happening in April. We also have um, the Hennessy Artistry, which is one of our title events, which comes off in December. And in between, I'm sure there can be so many more that we will be participating. It's all about connectivity in, in this day and age. And um, as a telecommunications company, we're well positioned to partner with these companies because we have the actual backbone in place already. Um, I, I suppose at this stage, I've talked about Digicel largely on a sort of um, on a Barbados level. There is a lot going on at Digicel on a group level as well. Um, as you're probably aware, I mean, Digicel is um, a 100% Caribbean company. It's headquartered in the Caribbean and it's incorporated in the Caribbean. But we have been pushing out into other territories, particularly in the South Pacific and into Central America. And um, for this year, the big player that we're involved in is Burma. And um, it looks like the Burmese telecommunications segment is going to open up. And this is a huge play for Digicel. I mean, Burma is a country the size of France with the population not close off as well. So. For, for a Caribbean company to be looking at launching in somewhere as large as this, it is a major step forward for us. We're not quite there yet, but we have people on the ground working at this particular stage. So that's the ambition of the company at, at this stage, is to you know, grow on a global level as well. Obviously, in, in this Barbados market, the growth is going to be primarily achieved outside the mobile sector. Well, that sector will continue to grow. And it is the, the total telecom sector, including the landline that we see our growth in, and um, we fully realise that growth has to be achieved by providing products and services that both people want, both consumers and corporates, and that they're willing to pay for, and that they're better than what the competitors offer. So um, that can only be good for the consumer. It has been extremely positive. Um, it's, a, it's brought service um, to areas that didn't have it previously, and it's also brought a different type of service to many of our corporate clients in that the service we have been providing has has been a lower contention ratio in that there's less people using the same pipes or back haul. Um, so 
it has been grown rapidly, the service that we've launched. We started it in corporate, and as of about four weeks ago, we also launched it for residential. For the consumer. We have been looking at it, and we've been looking at it even in these markets down here. It really augments or works best in markets whereby people are unable to get traditional types of bank accounts. Um, so in poorer areas, it has traditionally worked better. So these type of services originally started in markets like Kenya and Indonesia. We have launched them in Haiti very, very successfully as well. So um, there, there is a market here probably for it as well, but we haven't. We are considering it, but I haven't made the decision. DG Cell employs employs quite a lot of people directly, but also an awful lot of people indirectly as well, because we've a lot of distribution retail companies that obviously are supporting us as well. So that number is another number that's reasonably difficult to actually calculate. Um, market share, when people actually ask me in the corporate world, what is our market share, I traditionally say around 50-50, because -50, that's about the best guess you can actually give on that particular number at this particular stage in the mobile market here in Barbados. The, the Fair Trading Commission now have agreed that this is a dispute and they are going to make judgment on it. So for the first phase for us on this dispute on interconnect issues to enable us to compete in the landline market was that we needed to raise the dispute and that the Fair Trading Commission had to agree that it was a dispute and that they would actually adjudicate on it. Um, as of last week, the Fair Trading Commission have agreed to adjudicate on this. So they are going to look at both sides, the arguments of both sides to make a ruling.